Hello, friends and neighbors. I hope you're well. Uh, my name is Rich Brown. Welcome back to the Brownstone. I'm so glad you're here because today we're going to be talking about triads. Before I get into triads, listen, um, the response to this channel over the last month or so has been so positive and so overwhelmingly beautiful. And I have you to thank for that. Um, your support means the world much more than I could ever express uh, through mere words. Um, it means so much that you're here. It means so much that you're supporting the channel. This channel has grown exponentially over the last month. It's been pretty incredible to see the growth onwards and upwards, my friends. Uh, all that to say, I'm so grateful that you're here and thank you for your support. All right, my friends, now that we have addressed that very important bit of business, uh, let's move on to talking about triads. I love triads. I really do. I play them all the time, whether I'm playing bass lines or soloing. There's, there's such great movement in a triad that really just outlines the harmony in the most perfect way. And, um, and these three notes are the building blocks upon which so much music can happen. So let's talk a little bit about triads today. The triad, we're talking about three notes of the scale, the root, the third degree of the scale, and the fifth degree of the scale. So if I start on D, the fifth fret of the A string, I've got D, the root, F sharp, the third, and A, the fifth. Now here's the cool thing about playing triads. Um, I relate everything to shapes. So um, that triad that I just played has a certain shape physical shape that uh, is now in the muscle memory. And the thing we need to realize about triads is that, of course, there's more than one way to play them. So when it comes to triads starting from the root, there are three shapes that I can choose from. I've got fifth fret of the A string, fourth fret of the D string, second fret of the G string. That configuration of notes forms a certain shape, and then that shape, no matter where I move it, is going to be a major triad. It doesn't change. So when I think about a major triad, I have three options. And the three options are as follows. They're very simple. That first triad that I showed you has each note on a different string, right? Fifth fret of the A string, fourth fret of the D string, second fret of the G string. So each note of the triad is on a different string. So that's going to be one shape. So shape, we'll call it shape one. Shape one has each note of the triad on a different string. Shape two has the third and the fifth on the same string. So if I have D, F sharp, and A, then my second shape will simply move this A down to the seventh fret of the D string, and then I have a new shape. So that becomes, right? There's my second shape. So now I have fifth fret of the A string, fourth fret of the D string, and then seventh fret of the D string. Now this is important because I have a four fret span happening here, and my second finger starts on one string, I move down to the next string, and I play first finger and fourth finger, and that's a major triad. No matter where I move it, that's a major triad. And that's going to be shape two. Shape three involves putting the root 
and the third on the same string. So that means if I have D, F sharp, A for shape one, I have D, F sharp, A for shape two. Now for shape three, I'm moving my F sharp down to the ninth fret of the A string, putting the first two notes on the same string to give me this shape. D, F sharp, A. Make sense? Very simple, right? So if I follow through, this can be like the first exercise. The first, ex the first exercise will just be playing um, the major triad ascending and descending on all three shapes. So I'm going to play the triad up to the root again, or the octave, and then back down. So then I have shape one, that's shape one. Then I'll move to shape two. That's shape two. You notice the difference in the sound when I play this? the first thing I notice is that when I go to the fifth and then jump to the octave, on shape one, there's a space because I'm moving from that position to that position. But in shape two, it gives it a much more uh, legato sound. I can connect the notes a little easier. Now for shape three, That's a bit more of a stretch to make um, the root to the third. I know a lot of my students have uh, trouble with this one because of that stretch. But that's okay. You work on it and you get it. Here's the other thing. Um, I don't necessarily have to keep my hand in that stretch in order to make those two notes. If my thumb is planted on the back of the neck, then watch what happens. I can simply just play that first note. Slide, well, not slide, but just angle my thumb a little bit or pivot my thumb, and I can move and grab that note without having to stretch. You can see my fingers are still all together. So basically, my, th my thumb is just planted on the back of the neck, and I'm just rocking back and forth and I can easily make that stretch. Or that stretch doesn't become a stretch at all. It's just a matter of that pivot. Okay, so let's do this exercise again. We're gonna go through all three shapes of the major triad, ascending and descending. Shape one. That's it, boys and girls. Okay. Um, there's one more shape. Now, the reason why I did this in D is because there's one more shape that I want to talk about. And that shape involves the notes below the root. So remember, the notes of the, the D major triad, I've got D, F, and A. So we've played that on three different shapes. There's a fourth shape, and that fourth shape is going to involve playing the F sharp and the A below the D string. So then I can play the entire triad in a different way, where maybe I'll play this sort of subshape and combine that with shape one to get. It's 
a very cool sound. How cool is that? It just sounds great. It's like classical music already. Very cool. Okay. Um, now, here's the other reason why I wanted to play this in D. Because one of the things that we have to do, um, once we've learned these shapes on the A string, what I now want to do is be able to move them down to the E string. So if I'm on D, that's the fifth fret of the A. And if I move that D down to the E string, I'm going to be at the 10th fret of the E. Now what happens is I've got D here, my root note, and I've got my octave here at the 7th fret of the G string. So then I can play shape 1 and add my high octave here so I get this sound. Right? Now I'll do shape two. But here's the cool thing about shape two. <laughs> when I play shape two on the E string, I have root, third, fifth, octave, and I haven't even done anything that involves the G string as yet. So I can just follow through, noticing that this is my root, and I can play the triad again. There's my root, third, fifth. So then I have this whole pattern. That's just two octaves of the D major triad. And again, if you remember that four fret span, right? So root with the second finger, I move down to the next string and play first finger, fourth finger. And then I can do the same thing on the octave. Cool, right? That's shape two. So then if we move to shape three, I've got root, major third, fifth, root, major third, fifth. Now remember, shape three has the root and the third on the same string. So I'm on the 10th fret of the E string, moving up to the 14th fret of the E string then 12th fret of the A, 12th fret of the D, to start the triad again, because that's my root. Major third up from there puts me at the 16th fret of the D string, to the 14th fret of the G. I hope that all makes sense. There was a lot of numbers and, and stuff going on there. <laughs> but hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to uh, give this to you in a way that shows you the shape and has you put the shape in the muscle memory as opposed to, you know, learning the names of the notes and what they are and blah, blah, blah. If you get the shape, then it's all about moving the shape. It becomes very simple at that point. So the exercise that we played way down here at the fifth fret, we can now play um, starting on the E string. So that means if I just play through, want to play all the notes that I have in that position. So I'm going shape one and playing to the octave. That seventh fret of the G being the octave. Back down. Then when I go to shape two, let's say I just move up to root third, fifth,
pretty cool, right? We're just dealing with three notes. Can you believe that? We're making all this music and we're only using three notes. D, F sharp, A. Now, that's a major triad. To make my major triad a minor triad, all I have to do in this particular case of D major is make that F sharp and F natural. Just bring it down a fret, flatten it by a half step, and you now have a minor triad. So that's all well and good in explanation, but if you look at the shape and remember the shape, remember, you can learn the shape and then move the shape anywhere, it's not going to change. It's going to be a, it's going to be a minor triad wherever you play it. So if I have a D major triad, D, F sharp, A, and I make that F sharp an F natural by moving it down a half step, one fret, to the third fret of the D string, then I have a minor triad. So now I have D, F natural, A. There's my minor triad. So now we're just going to be dealing with those three notes. And we'll play those exercises that we just played. We'll play them again, now just using the minor triad. So first, we have to look at our three shapes. Shape one, we have fifth fret of the A string, to third fret of the D string, to second fret of the A string. Now, we have to look at this as a shape. That's our shape. And again, no matter where you play that, that's not going to change. That's always going to be a minor triad. So that's shape one. Now, shape two, if you remember, puts the third and the fifth on the same string. So that means we'll have uh, the F and the A both played on the D string, which gives us root, third, fifth. Or in this case, root on the fifth fret of the A, third on the third fret of the D. And then we move to the seventh fret of the D to play the fifth. So, shape one, shape two, bit of a stretch, and then shape three puts the root and the third on the same string. So, that's fifth fret of the A string, to the eighth fret of the A string, to the seventh fret of the D string. So now, let's play those exercises again, this time with the minor triad, right? So we start moving up to the octave. Already this sounds beautiful. These are such simple exercises based on three notes, but what you're doing is you're, you're getting a better understanding of the best way to articulate the triad for any given situation. So if you're playing through a certain chord progression, one shape is going to work uh, much better than another just because of the physicality of moving around the instrument. Economy of motion, as they say. All right, so we haven't gotten into our fourth shape yet. That subshape that puts the third and the fifth below the root note. So in this case, I have D, F natural, and then A. So now I'm going to find those notes below the root note. So here's D. My F natural at the first fret of the E string, and then I go to the fifth fret of the E string, to 
to play the A. So now that leads me to this next exercise where I can play the subshape, let's call it a subshape, uh, and combine that with shape one to the octave. So now I'm just adding the subshape to our first exercise, which goes like this. So now that we've got that down, we can move down to the D on the E string and then apply the same rules. Do the same exercises, this time with D, F natural, and A to make our minor triad. You see where I'm going here, boys and girls. So let's look at shape one, starting from the 10th fret. 10th fret of the E string, here's my D. F natural is going to be at the 8th fret of the A string. And then I move to the 7th fret of the D string and the 7th fret of the G string to complete our little triad. Now for shape 2, here's what I've got. We start with the same two notes, so I've got the D there's my F natural. Now I'm going to move to the 12th fret of the A string to play the 5th, and then 12th fret of the D string to play the octave. Now I can play the octave of the 3rd as well. This is going to be at the 10th fret of the G string. So now I have this cool little triad pattern. So this is shape 2. Minor triad. So then we can move to shape three. Now, the cool thing about shape three, when we put um, our root and third on the same string, what happens is it's very easy to play two octaves of the pattern. Because if I have root, third, fifth, then I can just repeat that pattern starting from the octave and play the triad again. So that leads us naturally to this exercise. So that triad, first of all, there's D, there's my F at the 13th fret of the E string. 12th fret of the A string gives me the, the A. And then I just repeat that pattern. Now when I say repeat that pattern, I'm simply repeating the physical pattern created by the triad. So that gives me this beautiful exercise. is the basics of triads. I know it's very simple, but you know, these shapes are beautiful things. And if you just sit and practice and, and sort of immerse yourself in the sound of what you're doing, the simplest things can just become so beautiful. And that's how I feel when I play these things. I, I, you know, I really enjoy practicing. For this reason, because you can use very simple, very simple ideas to make beautiful music. Um, and these simple exercises or etudes or whatever you want to call them, that's what they're all about. They're musical, they're beautiful, but you're also learning all of the shapes. We've got our three shapes now, along with our subshape, 
and we're playing them in two different positions. So although we're making beautiful music, yes we are, but we're also learning a lot about the fingerboard and how to put these ideas together so that you can then use them in other contexts when those situations arise. So I am going to leave you with that bit of information. Uh, and I hope you have fun with it. I hope it helps you on your journey to become the best musicians that you can be. That is what we're all about here at the Brownstone. Um, if you like the video, please click like, share it with everybody, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. You also have the option of donating to the channel if you feel that this lesson has given some value to you. What else can I say? Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for being here. I thank you so much for the support that you've given the channel so far. Onward and upwards, my friends, peace and love. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you so much for visiting the Brownstone. And I will see you in the next video.